Without a doubt, ACH payments are an essential tool for running an efficient, cost-effective payment process. But ACH operates differently from both paper checks and wire transfers, and understanding those differences is key to you maximizing its benefits. Today we're tackling some of the most frequently asked questions to help you fully grasp how to use ACH payments effectively. Stick around until the end when we review strategies for leveraging this payment method to boost your operational efficiency and decrease the cost associated with making payment. Question number one, what is an ACH payment? An ACH, automated clearinghouse payment, is a method of electronically transferring funds between banks through a secure and highly regulated network known as the ACH network. It eliminates the need for paper checks, making it a more efficient and a secure way for organizations just like yours to process payments. For instance, when employee's paycheck is directly deposited into their bank account, that's an ACH payment. Businesses now also use ACH to pay vendors or settle utility bills, saving time and reducing manual effort and costs. ACH payments are obviously more cost effective than wire transfers, which is why organizations that handle recurring or high volume transactions, such as paying many suppliers, prefer ACH for its simplicity and of course its lower cost. Question number two, what is the difference between an ACH and an EFT? ACH, which stands for Automated Clearinghouse, is a type of EFT, which stands for Electronic Funds Transfer. EFT is a broader term encompassing various methods of moving money electronically, and it includes ACH wire transfers and sometimes PCOT payments. Think of EFT as an umbrella with ACH being one specific way to move funds. For example, when a business sends multiple payments to many vendors through ACH, they're using one type of EFT. In contrast, when a car company urgently needs to transfer a large sum internationally, a wire transfer might be preferred due to its speed, although it is definitely more expensive. A small business might use ACH for paying suppliers, while a larger a corporation might use a combination of ACH for routine payments and wire transfers for international payments or when immediate settlement is needed or when there's that finality of payment issue. ACH may be cost effective, but when do you really need a wire transfer? We'll cover the critical differences shortly. What is a direct payment? Question number three, what is a direct payment? A direct payment is essentially an ACH payment made to a third party like a supplier or a vendor, excluding payroll. The term direct payment evolved, if you will, because one of the earliest applications of ACH was for payroll direct deposit, which we always call direct deposit. When businesses started using ACH for accounts payable, the term direct payment was coined to differentiate these payments from payroll. The system is widely favored for its cost efficiency and allows businesses also to better manage cash flow because you know exactly when the payment's going to hit and it simplifies your bank reconciliations. Question number four, what is the difference between an ACH and a wire transfer? ACH and wire transfers differ in speed, cost, purpose. Um, ACH transfers can take one to three day, business days to settle and are ideal for your routine non-urgent payment um, which is why you often use them in place of paper check. For example, when a company pays its utility bill, uh, the, bat the payment is processed in a batch along with many others and it keeps the cost down. Wire transfers, on the other hand, are processed individually in real time, making them suitable for your immediate high priority transactions. If a business, for example, needs to pay quickly pay a contractor in another country, they may opt for a wire transfer. And these can settle sometimes in a matter of minutes or hours. However, this convenience comes with a higher fee, which can range from $15 to $50, whereas most ACH transactions are typically under $1. Question number five, what if I discover an error after I've initiated an ACH payment? Can the payment be reversed? Yes, under certain circumstances, ACH payments can be 
reversed, but that reversal window is very small, especially for businesses. For example, if a company mistakenly pays a vendor twice, how often does that happen? We know more than we'd like. They can request a reversal, but they must act quickly, usually within 24 to 48 hours of the payment. Reversals are possible in cases of unauthorized transactions, fraud, or incorrect amounts. A real-life example would be a business initiating a payment of $10,000 ACH payment to a supplier only to realize after the fact that the amount should have been $1,000, not $10,000. If they notice the mistake pro promptly, they can contact their bank to initiate a reversal, but waiting too long means that the payment probably can't be retrieved. Question number six, and this is an important one. Do banks verify that all ACH debits have been authorized? No, banks in the U.S. do not verify whether the entity initiating an ACH debit is authorized, which is why regular bank reconciliations are essential. For example, if a crook obtains a company's bank account details and initiates an unauthorized ACH debit, the bank processes that payment without verifying the debit's legitimacy. A company might discover, for example, that $25,000 was debited from their account by an unfamiliar entity. If they're conducting daily bank recs, as you know we recommend here at AP Now, they can catch this quickly and request a reversal. However, if the reconciliation is delayed until the end of the month, which is how we used to do it, the window to reverse that fraudulent debit may have already closed. And you know the crooks are long gone with the money. Before we get to the issue of ACH payments failing, and yes, that occasionally does happen, if you're getting any value from this talk, hit the like button and sub subscribe. Your input helps us create the talks for you that you need to help and grow your business and your career. If you want to stay ahead of the curb and keep growing your expertise, join our community by subscribing now. Question number seven, can an ACH payment fail? Yes, ACH payments can fail for a variety of reasons, even though they are generally considered a reliable and efficient method for transferring funds. For professionals, understanding the potential cause of an ACH payment failure is critical when it comes to managing the payment process effectively and minimizing disruptions. Here are some common reasons that ACH payments fail, which by the way, doesn't happen often. Okay, cause number one, the company may have insufficient funds. One of the most common reasons an ACH payments fails is because insufficient funds were in the payer's account. So if the business tried to pay a $10,000 invoice, but they only had $8,000 in their account, the payment would be rejected and returned to the originator. Uh, your accounts payable teams should monitor your balances closely, especially if you're making large payments so you avoid this issue. Okay, reason number two, and this one happens, incorrect account information if the payer or the recipient provides an incorrect bank account or routing number the ACH payment will fail double checking banking details before initiating a payment can prevent such failures and of course once you've made one payment it's probably not going to happen again for that reason anyway okay reason number three that payments sometimes fail closed or frozen bank accounts an ACH payment will also pay will also fail if the recipient's account has been closed or frozen. Reason number four, banking system errors. Okay, and this is very, very rare, okay? Um, but the banking system does have some errors and the networks can have some uh, outages which will cause your payment to fail. Uh, but again, this does not happen often. Just put it in the back of your mind that it will happen occasionally, very, very occasionally. Okay, reason number five, um, there might be payment limits or restrictions. Some banks or accounts may have daily transaction limits or restrictions for ACH payments. And um, if you've forgotten about these and then you attempt to transfer an amount that exceeds the limit, the payment could be rejected. Okay, so you just need to keep them, keep these things in mind. But they're easily fit. And of course, when you talk to your bank, one of the things you should discuss is do they have any limit? And reason number six, um, and these are getting more and more uncommon, if you will, regulatory compliance failures. Um, if for some reason there was non-compliance with the ACH rules, um, maybe you missed a deadline for the payment, 
or you fail to meet certain regulatory state standards, this can cause the ACH payment to fail. But again, um, this doesn't happen often and typically what it will do is it'll just delay the payment for a day and it won't go through today because you missed the deadline and it'll go through tomorrow. Sometimes some of these issues will occur, by the way, if you've set up recurring payments and you don't, you forget to check. Okay, question number eight. What do businesses use ACH payments for? Companies use ACH payments for a variety of payments, dealing for, uh, uh, ranging from payroll, supplier payments, utility bills, and more. Um, today, most companies direct deposit employees' wages. Almost everybody gets paid this way, although not everybody does. And then this way, they, they, they don't issue the checks and the employee doesn't need to uh, cash the check or deposit it. Um, today, companies are also using this in growing and growing numbers to pay their vendors, uh, saving time, cost associated with processing the checks, etc. It also helps you manage cash flow more effectively effective effectively because you have some control over your disbursement you know basically when the items are going to hit which you don't always know with a check with approximately 60 percent of b2b payments now being made through the ach network it's clear that companies recognize the value of the secure and efficient method uh, both for recurring payments and one one-time payments is your business part of the 60 percent using ach for b2b payments if not you could be leaving some savings on the table ach payments have become the go-to method for companies looking to reduce their reliance on paper checks. But what about P cards? That's another way to get around paper checks. In our recent video on P cards versus ACH, we analyze which payment method should be best used in which circumstances. You can view that right now using the link that has appeared on your YouTube screen and is in the description. Good luck.